I hate you. And I always have, and I always will, and I've never forgotten about anybody that's talked about me. And y'all, if, if there is somebody I've forgotten about that's talked about me or made a video about me, any of these light skinned, biracial, ugly bitches that you can't even tell the black. That black woman, now that I'm skinny, I hate every one of you. I literally hate you. That's literally, literally she said that. I literally hate all of you. And now I get to be as mean as I want. And she wasn't kidding. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to the growing cult. I'm obviously kidding. If you don't know me, my name is Catherine. And for the most part on this channel, I talk about the things within my emergent generation that at best I feel to be, you know, innocuously intriguing. And at worst, I feel to be degenerative. This particular discussion is going to turn out, unfortunately, to be the latter. So let's begin. I'm going to start off by saying that I genuinely believe I have a lot of growing up to do. I mean, I'm reminded of that fact every time I go outside, every time I'm reminded of an experience of this life, so distinct to mine that the uniqueness of my own perspective humbles me. It convicts me, honestly, in the most uncomfortable way to be, uh, a little bit more quiet. Anyway, it's part of the reason I don't like particularly giving advice because I know that my perspective, my experience is not universally applicable. To be completely clear, you know, I don't think anyone's is, which is why I find the politics that burdens investing one's aesthetic to improve their experience, to improve their interaction with humanity, to be, you know, particularly fascinating. The more aesthetically palatable you are, the more likely it is you'll be engaged with favorably, arguably with greater envy, but you know, on the whole, I think you'll be more familiar with the benefit of the doubt. People being on the whole less suspicious of you. I mean, you know, depending on how well you carry that presentation. My point is, I think more often than not, it is a worthy investment. More often than not, you know, glowing up is a worthwhile investment, which is why I think to estimate the global aesthetics market to be within the trillion dollar range, it's, it's, it's not a surprising statistic to me. However, I'm noticing a pattern here and it is disturbing. And beyond being, you know, at least to me, an embarrassing one, it is a sad saddening one. It is what happens when people come into opportunity to elevate their social currency on whatever plane, aesthetic or financial, but usually the latter informs the former, although not, not in all cases. What I'm noticing happens is that there seems to be some event or some pattern of behavior after said elevation that often reflects as painfully exposing of some internal instability and quite a severe instability. Sometimes, depending you know on how confident you've now become in your new status, it comes with the expectation that you will be forgiven if not excused for something, some behavior on your part that society would typically deem unpardonable. It is often the type of behavior usually from a public figure that, you know, if you're like me, doesn't necessarily enrage you or prompt you to, you know, hack uncontrollably on a given beverage or food stuff of choice. It usually causes you, you know, to just set the cup or food stuff down and reflect very uh, deeply on, on the flavor and what it is that you are consuming. It really makes you stop and think and just appreciate the, the air around you. Like, I don't know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it just, it gives you pause and not at all in, in a good way. Anyway, I think we often underestimate how severely our demons still control us when they are hidden. And insecurity is one of the most ancient, corrosive, and draconic of them all. And often it is that elevation, it is that revision to your aesthetic, to your financial status, to your esteem that hides that particular demon because you are under the assumption that you are protected. Often, and this is how the narrative typically tends to go, this manifests in some moral controversy where the subject, you know, feels that the damage of their actions inflicted against some other third party. And again, often there has been quite some significant damage and harm caused. Anyway, the subject feels that that damage is not their cost to bear. It is not to be apologized for. And they often believe themselves more victim than anyone else in this particular narrative. And I've been holding this back because when I was fat, I know nobody would listen to me. But now that I'm skinny, I'm gonna fuck your man. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna sleep with your dad. And I'm gonna buy anything you want. I'm gonna buy you. And I think you see this sometimes with people who feel like they really have a chip on their shoulder against the- And I get that. Like, I get that. Like, the world oppresses you. They treat you bad because of- your skin and the way you look or your weight or whatever it is. There's definitely some righteous outrage there. 
but how can it be funneled in a way that will at the end of the day still help you and not burn you at the stake? I'm not exactly sure whether we should name names, but I am almost completely convinced that you have someone in mind. Other times, you know, it's some very just, just unhinged <laughs> behavior on the internet that more than anything makes you question to what extent this person was taught to manage their influence or their social currency, however it is reflected at the time of said controversy. The response to criticism is often even more exposing of the instability I spoke to earlier, untreated for the same immaturity. And so character exposing, not necessarily because this person is inherently bad, although, you know, they might be, <laughs> but more so because they are operating from a place of defensiveness that supports an unrelated context when they were hurt before. It's like, an, okay, I hope you're still following me, subconsciously correcting for some injustice that your previous state of social currency did not protect you against before your esteem, your appearance, your privilege was at this height. Whatever it is, you know, who you want to call it, the point is, you didn't have it at the time that you were hurt. And if that is genuinely where your defensiveness is motivated from, then before, you know, before I get any further into this video, I just want to say that I am sorry, genuinely, whatever it was, it should not have happened to you. He or she should not have treated you that way, should not have spoken to you that way. Dishonored, honestly, the integrity of your humanity with such disregard and still managed to get away with it. That should not have happened. And there is absolutely no excuse for it. But what you are doing with your actions especially so if they are harmful and i say this i truly i say this in the gentlest way possible what you are doing in your actions if they are harmful is engaging in a self-fulfilling prophecy and you don't even realize it villain origin stories are not that complicated they are very easy to understand and often the villain becomes more severely malevolent the more their current actions are misunderstood that is why i'm trying to be gentle with this video i'm, I'm not attacking you I think we often forget, and this is the funny but kind of scary thing, that the aggressive voice at the back of our heads, you know, telling us to do better, to show that guy, you know, with too much audacity, you know, or more seriously, the teacher who believed in the worst of our capabilities, to prove to that parent who could do nothing but exude passive aggressive disappointment in their interactions with us. In my case, yes, the mean girl turned teacher who didn't know how to be nice. Anyway, um, that aggressive voice at the back of our heads telling us to be better, to look better, telling us to do better, to, to, you know, to look better, to be better at whatever cost necessary. It isn't an angel, at least in, in my personal experience, it isn't an angel pushing us towards self-improvement. It is a desperate, aggressive devil that has formed an insecure, aggressive actor out of many, will create one out of you and use you as its puppet to create more of its kind. It's not for you. It's not your friend. And hey, let's be, let's be completely real. Neither am I. I'm just, I, who, who am I? I'm just this random girl on the internet. But hey, at least I'm not against you. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I will see you next time, whenever next time happens to be. Can you please, please, please be sure to take care of yourself. Goodbye.